What's going on guys? Welcome back to another scooter video. Today we're up at Beaver Creek Skate Park and I've got some competition preparation to do. Now I know I've made a couple videos in the past where I've talked about some competition prep, but today we're really going to dive into the crucial points and steps that you guys need to do when you're training and practicing for your upcoming competition. So without any more hesitation, let me stop talking and let's get into it. That sun is right in the just gorgeous area, but it also is in the worst area because it's basically making this half pipe half usable. So every ramp on that side is perfect, and then every trick on this side, you get like blammed by the sun. I apologize in advance for the audio, guys. We've got an Orby fight behind us. But we're gonna go ahead and drop in, just get warmed up. I'm gonna start this whole session off just by, you know, getting the flow going, getting the juice pumping. We just got in, so first drop in, music initiated now. That's 50-50. That was almost a bad one. Let's go back for that. Nope, that's Smith. Oh, now I'm just all messed up. There it is. The whip in. All right, now we're one up in that because that was a pain. That's a pretty good warm up right there. Let's now dive into the competition prep. Stoke Run is having a competition coming up in like two weeks, so I've got some mad prepping to do. I have not been on my scooter as much as I'd like to have been. We've been flying all over the place. We were in Arizona, so if you haven't seen those videos, click the link down in the description or up in the upper right hand corner. But right now, we're gonna try to do some tricks that I wanna get consistent for the competition. So I know for sure I'm gonna be doing some buttercups, five flares, and some inwards. So I really wanna work on those, and I wanna show you guys some little tips and tricks here and there throughout the video about how to actually dial in those tricks and make sure you're good for the competition so you don't like you know end up falling mid-run that's the worst thing to do is you don't want to fall mid-run because if you fall mid-run basically takes you from out of being able to even place anywhere up first i'm gonna start with the basic trick just a buttercup i know i'm gonna be doing buttercups in this line so let's get them nice and dialed get some high ones get some low ones get some variable speed ones i'm gonna aim for doing about 10 in a row just to really get them like consistent let's start off with number one just on the really blinding side and just do it nice and chill we'll get a little bit higher on this next one and uh See if we can do a little bit more arc into it because in my run I'm kind of envisioning doing a nice boosty one so yeah more like that I really want to be able to continue my speed so I got to make sure I'm catching nice and high on the transition so this next one is on this side and make sure I'm boosting the heck out of it oh uh, yeah I like when I get that nice little snap and then it comes down it's like Choom! that was number three we got about seven more buttercups to do and then I'd say I'm pretty good let's do a really slow and low one just to make sure I got the motion like super quick not even above coping. Nice and low and slow. We're gonna aim for doing it over two sheets of skate light right there. So we're gonna like go boom, boom. That's about eight feet of a gap. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Caught a little bit lower than I wanted to though for number five. So let's get number six. Catching it and using that speed. Yeah, that was much better. Approaching the other quarter pipe with the amount of speed that I actually wanted. And that was number nine. For the 10th one, we're gonna do this one extra big. Get it nice and lofted. Yeah, that was nice and solid. That was 10 right there. 10 seems to be a pretty good number because we can do something 10 times in a row, different variable speeds, different sides of the ramps, even on different ramps. That means you've got the trick nice and dialed and you should be good to be able to do it in a comp, no matter what speed you approach it with. So moving on to the next trick, I'm thinking Superman's up next. Now, one thing I should mention, at Stoke Run, I'm, I'm planning to do a Superman over a box, so doing them air is gonna throw me off a little bit, so I might actually change this over and take it over to the hip. But I'm gonna do a couple more air just to make sure I've got them nice and dialed, maybe like three or four air, and then take it to the hip in the back. See if we can get some extension on this one, get it nice and stylish. Yeah, that was pretty good. Already out of breath and panting now. I'm not even like in a run, I'm just doing the tricks over and over again, but that is very exhausting. That's something you need to also work on is cardio, and I stink at that. Let's do this next one a little bit lower. 
make my hands move a little quicker on that. That's pretty good. That was three. Let's go down to four. Let's do one fly out actually. That might resemble a box jump better. Yeah, but I just don't like doing fly out because it's just so brutal on the ankles. Let's do one more on the, the hip over here because I feel like that would be a good spot. Yeah, that honestly feels like the most like a box jump. So we'll probably do the other the last five on that guy. Number six. One thing I also just remembered is the Stoke Run box jump is super long. So it's like a 10 foot like top deck as opposed to like a standard eight foot top deck. So that means I really need to push out while doing the Superman. So I think on this next one, I'm gonna try to hit the quarter and then like almost in that six foot extension area. That way it's like treating it like more of like a box jump. I should also mention if you guys are actually gonna be doing a competition, you probably should get to the park a couple times before you actually do the competition to make sure you're fully prepared and you actually know the park. Cause there's been some parks I've been to and I know I look like an absolute noob if, I, if it's like my first time because I just don't know the ramps, don't know the transitions, and I start falling everywhere because I don't know every nook and cranny. So get to the park a couple, like, you know, maybe weeks beforehand or maybe even months if it's lucky enough to be in your same state or something. <sighs> Gotta catch my breath here for a second. Yeah, let's go back for the last three Supermans, I believe. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, on this last one, I'm gonna try to throw a little extra sauce in here just to make sure they're really done. Yeah, I like adding extra tricks and the tricks to make sure it's extra consistent. Although I do have a backstory for that. Once when I went to Michigan to compete, I was practicing my buttercups, kind of like how I am today, but I started doing buttercup whips. And then I was like, oh, you know what? Let me try some buttercup double whips. And I started getting those so consistent that I actually messed up my buttercup rotation because I was so used to just like not catching the buttercup and I would just keep going. So actually in the competition run, I had planned a buttercup like really, really boosted on quarter pipe. Ended up doing a buttercup whip the first run. And then I was like, okay, fine. No biggie, I'll just do a buttercup whip in my run the next time. And the next run I did, I literally did a, a buttercup double whip because I was like, Which, where's my count, where's my count? And I missed it and I just, I managed to catch it. It ended up being perfectly fine. Got some bonus points for one-upping my run, but like, still, take the one-upping with the grain of salt. That way you're not actually, you know, messing up your, your tricks that you're getting consistent. But now that brings us into the next trick. I'm thinking, I know I'm gonna be doing some flare turndowns and maybe even some 540 flares depending on how like the comp day is feeling because you never know sometimes you want to have a backup trick so my backup trick for flare turndowns is 540 flares if I'm feeling it on the day of the comp I'll be like way more dialed in and ready to send them but sometimes those nerves get you so you just got to go fall back to the more like consistent tricks but let's first get some flare turndowns make sure we're catching transition too while I'm doing this yeah, that was nice. If I could do that in a comp run, catching that much transition will be solid. Let's get some water though. I'm, I'm kind of parched. Let's do one now with the sun just blaring at us because that'll make it real hard. Gotta make sure I'm knowing why I'm doing it. Yeah, I caught a really long transition on that. I played that one safe. I didn't want to, you know, mess it up and hit the coping too hard. But you never know in the comp. You could be hitting things at way different speed. Maybe even get a bug in your eye. Who knows? Probably should change it up. Maybe we'll do one on like a little three foot ramp over there. Yeah, I couldn't imagine doing one that low. That means I did something else wrong in the line first. Let's now come over to this quarter pipe over here where it's like, it's not a half pipe, so I'm technically running up and getting some different speed. That's really the goal of this, is just to get so consistent at doing the tricks that you're really good at and making sure that no matter what part you're at, you can do them over and over again. Landed a little flatter on that one, but that's why we're practicing on different ramps. And that was number six. Let's get a couple more. All right, let's get a little more speed on this one. Yeah, much more transition. Basically all the ramps in here are like the same ramp, so we can't really change it up too much, but we can at least change up the run-ups. Let's get this one nice and good. Alright, this next one I want to be absolutely click. Yeah, that was super good. That was number nine. We got one more. Let's do this 10 one back on the half pipe. Make sure we're like getting gorgeously high in the air. Yeah. That was pretty good. That was about three tricks so far. We got the buttercup, we got the Superman, we've got now flare turndowns, and I'm getting a little bit tired, that's for sure. So that's about like 30-ish plus tricks, and uh, definitely feeling it. I know during a comp run, you have to be so conditioned because after about 45 seconds, your legs just start dying on you, and being able to send the tricks that you're used to sending, it's just, it's hard. I probably get like 15 seconds in the run, and I'm like, oh God. I need oxygen. <laughs> but uh, next trick on my list I want to do is probably some inward air. So let's do some over like two sheets. That's my goal because it's about an eight foot gap. Let's do one nice and slow just to make sure if we catch not enough speed. 
Oh gosh, that was a bad one. <laughs> Ended up doing like a whip, unwhip inward. That's why we practice this. We gotta make sure it's dialed. And I know this isn't like a super hard trick by any means, but when you're linking about seven or eight solid tricks, especially when they're over like unique gaps and stuff, sometimes the basic tricks can like goof you up in a line. And we're trying to avoid that for sure. And back to back ones. One. There we go. We'll just do four more. Conserve my energy a little bit. Oh, that's a gorgeous one. Oh no. Woo. Sorry, bars. I landed so far on the side that I had to like hit the e-brake. I about got clocked on that thing. All right, we gotta get this last one so good that it makes up for all the errors. Yeah, I'll take that all day. Up next, we've gotta do some five flares. And I've been avoiding this trick a little bit just because they've been a little bit sketchy lately. When I've been doing them, I've been doing them a little bit more off axis than I normally would. So this is definitely one I need to focus on and redial. It's kind of one of those scarier tricks that if you're really worn out, especially if you're in a mid comp run and you're just like not feeling it in your legs and stuff and you don't give it your all, it could go south like really fast. So hopefully by doing like 10 in a row, we should be good. I wanna do like five or so on this quarter pipe, about three or four on the back quarter pipe and then maybe one or two on the back side of this quarter pipe just to make sure that I'm able to approach it from different speeds, different angles and just get them locked in just like basically every other trick here. You guys are getting the theme of this video, right? Consistency. All right, let's just get this started. Let's stop procrastinating. Chalk it off the list. Number one. Let's do this one a little higher. Catch a little more transition too. Oh yeah, that one's so perfect. The most intimidating part is just starting it because you know you got 10 ahead of you to do and it's exhausting. So you get like five into it and you mess up and you're like, oh my gosh, I messed up. Then you are supposed to realistically do 10 more. We got number two down. Let's get number three going right here. That was even better than all the other ones. Cool. Number three. Let's get number four. Let's do this one a little bit slower as if like I've approached the ramp flat from the previous ramp. So we're going to drop in with a little less intensity here. Oh, pop that one. Super hardcore because I was like not approaching with the same speed. But that was number four. Let's get number five. Let's... They're getting a little off axis though. I'm getting tired and when I, when I get tired, I get lazy with them and I stop pulling as hard, which means that rip off, I start cheating it. I start turning too early, which then turns me like into a dip 900 and that's when things get a little want. We're gonna change it up, do it on this side now. Get the sixth one over here just to make it a little different. Now I know this is literally like the exact same transition in quarter pipe as the one on the other side, but something about it from approaching from a little bit farther away and approaching from the concrete where the ramp kind of kicks in, it's like a boom, boom, and then to the quarter pipe. Nice. Let's make sure we can do one more and then we'll take the last one to this quarter pipe, which is the weirdest one of them all. Oh, fought for that one. <laughs> I was so off axis, but we still pulled it around. All right, this one's gonna be a super weird approach, but we're gonna go down this little like little railing right here, cut the corner and get some speed. Kind of like we did the player turn down. Let's do it. Oh, that was flat. <laughs> but we got it. All right, that was number 10. I feel like I should do one more back on the half pipe just to solidify a proper one. Those really should not feel like nerve wracking at all considering I can do them basically whenever I want to, but for some reason, they just mess with me. It's just it's just a scary trick, but I love that trick at the same time. It's a, it's a love-hate relationship. But now we gotta focus on some rails. Soak Run has one rail in the entire indoor section, and if I don't hit it in the run, it's kind of like I'm avoiding it. So it's actually not much different than this rail right here, so it's not big at all. But that's good because this will be something comparable to practice on. I'm gonna do a couple tricks on it just to make sure we're nice and dialed. I don't really have anything like that I wanna like make sure I'm like really good at. I just wanna make sure I'm not gonna like slide out as soon as I hit the rail. So let's do 10 rail grinds. And then we'll probably wrap it up there cause I'm pooped and it's getting cold and that sun is setting. We're just gonna start number one out with a, just a board slide. Angel's filming me because she thinks that something cool is gonna happen here, but literally nothing cool is gonna happen here. I'm the worst at rails. We're gonna get better at them just by doing them. But that was number one. All right, that was two. Yeah, that worked. We're on number six now, and dare I try a 50-50 grind. I like doing them on coping, but if I can just tell myself this is like a ledge, I should have no problem. 
Oh yeah, as long as I tell myself it's a ledge and there's not a fall on the other side, we're good. Should we do a board to whip, keep it classy? Nope. <laughs> I don't know why, but I wanted to send the whip <laughs> before the grind, which I know I said a grind then whip. <laughs> Yeah, I just got a little scared. Let's try that again. No. Dude, do a whip. <laughs> hey, we got it. I need to think of something different because if I just do a board slide, not as cool. Overboard to bar, so like if I approach from this side right here, overboard, and then on the way down, chuck the bar in there. Do the bar spin. <laughs> you saw me, you saw me click it. Just didn't throw it. Oh, that was it. There it is. This to whip out. Oh, or we get the first try. Let's go. Under here, we're gonna go bank to grind. This is gonna be terrifying. Okay, we got a new tester. Oh, that's gonna be scary. It was at this moment that he knew. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that's what I get for not committing. <laughs> I'm scared to do it now. I'm about to die on that one. I'm so glad that rail is not higher than my. You know. Oh god, it's so hard. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that scared the behebes out of me. We're done with this now. Ending it strong there with the rail grind. We're gonna end the comp prep right there. Pretty gassed after all that because that was a lot of riding in about an hour and a half. I know during a competition run, I'm gonna be doing a lot more exertion, so I'm gonna have to prepare myself for that, like cardio wise. So I'm gonna be doing some treadmill runs, some runs around the block, and all that good stuff. But I hope you guys were able to pick up a thing or two from today's video. Maybe you'll know now how to go out and actually start doing some comp prep for yourself and start getting in the placement at the competitions. I know she's up there right now, so we're gonna end the video here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, give a big old thumbs up. And also, shout out to Angel back there for uh, helping me film a bunch of parts in today's video. I don't know, I'm sweating. But that's gonna do, guys. I'll see you guys at the competition.